What is good? We're back. And we got some flaming hot takes for you. Emphasis on flame. <laughs> we, we, uh, we never do this, but uh, Austin suggested it. I thought it would be a lot of fun. It's, uh, you know, we're heading into summertime. It's getting hot. It's already hot as heck down here in yeah. Charleston, South Carolina. I don't know how it is in, uh, in New Jersey, uh, but how's it going up there, Austin? Oh, dude, it was it was beautiful today. It was like 75 and sunny. I wasn't mad. I wasn't complaining, but I'm looking to fight every single person in the YouTube comments today. So that's really my only goal, man. We we never do anything like this. So this is going to be unique. This is fun. I'm, I'm, I'm really eager. I'm just excited about this one, man, because, you know, we're just going to have a good conversation and just... Yeah. Just be a little more bold than normal. So yeah. we'll probably be wrong on every single take. Yeah, that's the point of the hot take, right? You know? Oh, so. I got some good ones. But no, we're, we're, we're going to have a little bit. Hot of take. This is going to be our best episode yet. <laughs> 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 we're going to have a little fun today. Just basically, I just tried to find the things that either might make you the most mad. Not <laughs> you, but the listeners. Or just, you know, I maybe maybe I might believe in some of them. But. Some, something that I thought might have a decent conversation with it as well. So, awesome. Why don't you lead the way here? You like flaming Hot Cheetos? You, you, you like those? Andy's fries? Get rid of them. Some hot fries? You, you mess with hot those? Hot fries. I'll fuck with that. You like that. the hot fries? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Isaiah Pacheco, top 10 running back this season. Casey, you ready? Uh-huh. Maybe this isn't hot enough, man. I feel like you're going to one-up me here. I feel like you're going to... I feel like you're going to go above and beyond going on this episode, takes already? But, but, but we're talking about a running back who had more points per game than B. John Robinson last year, more rushing yards per game than Jameer Gibbs, more receptions than Saquon Barkley. Uh, this is this is a seventh round pick, dude. He barely got drafted right next to Brock Purdy. We're talking to Isaiah Pacheco. And keep in mind, the Kansas City Chiefs did not select a running back in the draft. He has played in 95% of his career games. Uh, 38 out of 40 to be exact. He ran a 4.37 40 time. And, and if there's one thing you take away from this segment, it's right here. Notable free agents this offseason uh, that the Chiefs could have signed. Saquon Barkley, Derrick Henry, Josh Jacobs, Joe Mixon, Austin Eckler, Tony Pollard, DeAndre Swift. I'm probably missing a few. Clyde edwards uh, yeah. Well, they did I'm sign. Probably, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm, probably, I'm probably missing a few. But the Chiefs did not sign any of those guys that shows you that actions speak louder than words they are confident they believe in isaiah pacheco and actually in one of my dynasty leagues today pacheco just got bought for a 2026 first i was kind of surprised man i didn't think the market was quite that bullish but hey man every league's different uh, and if you're still not convinced second in catch rate this season 89.8 percent seventh in red zone touches eighth in opportunity share 11th in breakaway run rate and 12th in yards created. So he is practically top 10 in all of those metrics. Is it really that far-fetched for him to be a top 10 RB this season? I'm just saying, I think that there's an actual chance this happens. I, I just thought it was very telling what the Chiefs did this offseason, not pursuing any of the, of the high-quality free agent running backs. And at this point, I don't think you can deny that Isaiah Pacheco has truly proven to be durable, productive, efficient, and uh, he took that massive leap that we love to see from year one to two. So, Casey, tell me, tell me why I'm crazy. Well, I could, you know, it's hot take time, so I could, I could dispel some of this, but I, I'm not going to. Um, I, I like it. I, Pacheco is one that that is is the, to move. Sometimes that's what you have to do, right? Sometimes you have to. I'm just going to go back to the first round pick part of this. Sometimes you have to go an extra year out to get the first mm -hmm. for the guy because it's really hard to get. Nobody's I've tried forever to get a first for Isaiah Pacheco hasn't worked out. Um, and I, you know, you, so you usually have to you lose a little value on the Pacheco game, but pushing it to the to the 2026. People aren't as concerned. That guy's probably trying to win now. He's thinking, oh, my it's going to probably be 112 because I'm mm -hmm. great for two years. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, good, that, that's a that's a solid move. But. I don't hate that. I think I, I don't I might might not have been super duper spicy, but I mean, he he doesn't get quite the respect he probably deserves from me and and a lot of people. And, and the trade market kind of shows that. And uh, the Chiefs know what they have in him, and they're fine with it. So let's roll. You know, wheels up, baby. Wheels up. Right. All right. My my first hot take is Garrett Wilson, wide receiver, 
numero uno out of all the wide receivers. Number one comes in and just smashes it like this. We have yet to see <clears throat> what Garrett Wilson's full potential is because he's been playing with a bunch of bozos. I think with the skill set that this guy has, and I said it on one of the shows, I don't know if it was Patreon or not, but Big Co didn't like it, that that <laughs> that Garrett Wilson, I think, has the potential to score Justin Jefferson-like points and be a Justin Jefferson-like player. We just He just hadn't had the quarterback to, to help him get there. And I think Aaron Rodgers coming back this year, Jets going to be a decent formidable franchise in this season and Garrett Wilson is going to light the entire league on fire. That's a hot take that the Jets what? are going to be formidable and good. That I mean they were form they were pretty decent. Something's going to happen. They were pretty decent last year and they're they cursed. they lost their quarterback 11 seconds into the season. See? As, as well, far as, yeah. something's going to go wrong. I mean, uh, do not hold maybe. out hope if you're a Jets fan. Maybe. Now what are you doing? Most likely. But It's like being a Gamecock fan. But I do. Shots fired. Go Tigers. I do believe that if if Justin Jefferson and Aaron Rodgers can play, there will be a special connection there. Garrett Wilson. If, <laughs> what did I say? Justin Jefferson. Uh, uh, Garrett, uh, if Garrett Justin Wilson. Jefferson and Aaron Rodgers can play. Yeah. I, I, I think we can see him putting up similar numbers, CD and Justin Jefferson, like just commanding a ridiculous target share uh, and just scoring a ridiculous. He's, he's incredibly hard to guard. He's had to have, has to have had been extremely frustrating for Garrett Wilson his first two years in the league. You finally think you're getting Aaron Rodgers, and you know, it just and going back to Hard Knocks, I know it's Hard Knocks and they're shoot, and they're there, but they had it seemed like they had a, a solid chemistry, a solid connection. You like and them. Aaron Rodgers is not scared to throw the dog shit out of it to one guy, uh, and Garrett Wilson I think is going to be the beneficiary of that. And you know, Alan Lazard, Mike Williams, and a rookie. Um, Malachi Corley. Malachi Corley, you know, there's no, nothing, nothing super duper sexy there. I think, I think that it, it's, it's fine enough. I think Tyler Conklin might be the underrated OG of that offense. Uh, you know, n n a tepid take Tyler Conklin, top 10 tight end finish. It's pretty hot. Top 10 tight end finish. I don't think any top 10 tight end finish is a hot take. That could be anyone. <laughs> yeah. One but, of us could, might could do that. But uh, Conklin was good last year, really. Uh, for a lot sure. of, especially in premium, yeah. you, I, I think Conklin's going to come out there and 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 really have a have a nice season here with the New York Jets. So that's my first uh, hot take: Garrett Wilson, wide receiver one. I, you know, you could plug. I thought about going Jalen Waddle there and going taking over Tyreek's spot and coming in and just, but I, you know, I want I, I give my the big dog Garrett some some love there. So Casey, I got a question for you, you before got? we move on. Now, the Jets haven't been to the playoffs since 2010. It is the longest streak in the NFL. Is this the year? You, If you had to bet a lot of money, mm. is this the year? Which direction would you put your money on? Do they not get to the playoffs this year the or Jets. do they not? If Rodgers is healthy. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me get that caveat, okay. bet makers. Well, I mean, it's not his collarbone. <laughs> yeah. Big co. <laughs> You'd have but to be an OG. If, if you're not an OG, Allen, Big Co was was out on Aaron Rodgers for a while. Too many collarbone because he had injuries. too many collarbone injuries, and he could be out of the league. The then next he went and got an MVP the next year. Um, so shout out to you, Big Co, who's making a lot more appearances back on the show. Good to have you back. Uh, but I wouldn't I wouldn't bet a lot of money on anything Jets related. Mm -mm. Um, Smart man. <laughs> outs, but but. I think that defense is really good. I think Sala, for all the shit that he takes, is a very good defensive coach. Is Nathaniel Hackett and Rodgers able to hack it? I don't know. Uh, is, is Hackett should be, should he be the guy? I don't know. Is I saw he's more uh, interested in Zach Wilson. I think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who's the uh, Who's the dude who used to be on the Ringer and now he saw him on ESPN? He was saying he he hates the marriage between Hackett because Hackett doesn't push Rodgers like Lafleur would push. He lets Rodgers. Rogers put it wherever he wants bro bro rogers is 40 let my man just go out there and do what the fuck he needs to do yeah you like, don't want to push it like lafleur did that didn't work out either <laughs> yeah so uh I, I would say that that i think i think they could i think they can beat any team in that division any given day they've given those teams dog fights without a fucking quarterback so if they can keep rogers upright which they invested you know uh, uh, more in that line so hopefully that's a uh Brian smith it, right and 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 a right tackle. Right. And they they drafted a guy. They got high. your boy Elijah Vera Tucker. Okay. Um and then you know, they, we'll see what happens, you know, who they bring in there. Maybe 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 Bakhtiari might wander over there. Oh, if he's, no. oh yeah. If he's, if he's still able to play a little. Uh, but yeah, so 
I, you know, I think it's a very good possibility that they could they could make the playoffs this year. A lot of I mean, a lot of teams make the playoffs. <laughs> so that's true. Plus, you know. Anyway, all right, Austin, what you, you got for us next? Hey, guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 rookie draft kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. All right, Casey, let's get a little bit more spicy. Dalton Kincaid outscores Sam Laporta in fantasy points this season. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. You ready? No, 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 hold on. You ready? Now. Jay, you ready? Mm, yes. <laughs> uh, we are talking about a tight end who was the first tight end selected in the 2023 NFL draft, man. Uh, Dalton Kincaid, the draft capital was there. <laughs> the, the size is there, 6'4", 246. Speed, 4'6", 840 time. I mean, you love to see it, man. Like, he checks a lot of boxes. We have a team, the Buffalo Bills, that is the second most vacated targets, 317. You know how this works, man. All 317 have to go to Dalton Kincaid, mm. of course. That's over 58% of their targets from 2023. Uh, I would argue Dalton Kincaid benefits more than anybody from the departure of Gabe Davis and Stephon Diggs. You know, yes, we have Keon Coleman there. Keon Coleman, he, hey, he is what he is, man. He's he is no Stefan Diggs, that's for sure. Um, but I, I and look, I like I think that Keon will command a healthy portion of vacated targets, but but Kincaid will absolutely receive an abundance. He'll yeah. receive significantly more, right? Nobody's gonna argue with me on that. And and look, well. tied tied. Well, actually, yeah, you're probably right. Some people <laughs> Hit us in the comments. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's fight on YouTube. Uh but tied to Josh Allen, man. That this is probably the biggest takeaway I have, right? Like the fact that he is gonna be paired with him for the foreseeable future, right? And I and I view Dalton Kincaid more of if anything, like as a weapon rather than, rather than just a tight end. Yeah. You know, he had more receiving yards than Kyle Pitts, uh, more receptions than Kittle last year, more targets than Komet. Like he did this as a rookie, man. He was top 10 in receiving yards, top 10 in targets, top 10 in receptions. Yes, Laporta just had the GOAT rookie season in like NFL history. And I love, I love Laporta. I just, I think there's a world that exists where Dalton Kincaid could truly put up relatively similar numbers, man. If he can stay healthy for 17 games, you know, maybe, maybe he actually gets it done. Yeah, I'll I'll double down on that, and I'll say Kincaid breaks the receptions for tight ends in a single season. Boom! Mm. Spice on spice on spice. That was. I think Zach Ertz with 116. I, I think you might be right. right. Decent pull. Didn't Decent see that pull. coming. Yeah, I'm a sicko, dude. This is like the only thing that I have sicko. up here. So. Yeah. <laughs> um. Now, will it be counted because it's 17 game? You know, I don't know. Who, who knows? Uh, but I like it. I love it. I think I think that's a good. You want some more of it? Yeah, I almost. Uh, I think that's a very good uh, hot take there. I think Kincaid's going to come out. I don't here know what it just, is about that little girl's loving. <laughs> Kincaid's going to absolutely slay this year. I love it. All right, my next hot take: <laughs> Trevor Lawrence MVP. MVP, <laughs> MVP, no MVP. Way. Wow, Clemson. <laughs> Say it, Jason. Tigers. I got a, I got a tie. I got another piece to this uh, at the end there that I'll double down on. But look, I know this is mostly because I know everybody hates Trevor Lawrence right now. <laughs> and get some people fired up. So mad. But Duval, shout out to Jay Mike. It's basically no better than Gardner Minshew when he played there. <laughs> yeah, didn't you see that stat? I did see that. Um, I can't remember who it was from. So blocked it out. Trevor then brought it back. Trevor has been outstanding for the Jacksonville has Jaguars he? since since his inception outside of the one year with, you know, Marty Huggins, whoever was coaching him before. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well have been Marty Huggins. Get a broom because it's a mess. And, He's like the and, exact opposite of Marty Huggins. Yeah. He's like Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell, yeah. Basically, Doug, Pam. Doug Peterson came in, swept it up. Not my favorite coach, but I think it was needed here. I wish they kind of would have switched some things up this year. But you can Google it. It's worth I, a Google. I think he co they come in. They've added more offensive linemen. Trevor Lawrence was outstanding last year, but then was just beat up. Missed his first game of, of his entire career here. Look, he was he won his first like game ever. Right. He won his first game as against the Colts. Then he lost to Kansas City and lost to Houston. 
which nobody at the time knew what Houston was there. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that was a, a, a strong game. Atlanta, then a win, then one, two, three, four, five wins in a row, a loss to the Niners. And the Niners were just coming off a little schneid there, and they kicked the dog shit out of them. Um, then a win against the Titans, win against the Texans, and then, they, then, then a bunch of losses because Trevor was banged up. He had lost Christian Kirk. He was little mo with the gimpy leg out there, just, <laughs> you know, having a, having a tough time. But I, I think Trevor's the real deal. I think we see a Trevor bounce back. I think... Brian Thomas being in the role of what they wanted Calvin Ridley to do is a better option for what they wanted Calvin Ridley to do. And I think Gabe Davis being on the other side as a good run blocker and can give you outlets to get down the field from time to time. And then Zay and Ingram just eat it up in the middle of the field. I think I think Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars make the playoffs, win the division, and Trevor is... Hey. What's that? Colts, dude. Yeah. Oh. Well, I know. Well, and I'll, and I'll follow that up with that. And uh, ETN, I think, is is a, is an outstanding player as well. So they got all the parts and pieces. Go Tigers. Uh, and I think I think Trevor Lawrence MVP. And then on top of that, I think AFC South best division in football next year, from top to bottom. Wow. Right? So that's that that helps T Law get to the mountaintop of damn. Look at this division he had to go through. Colts and Anthony Richardson, Stroud and the Texans, and then Will Levis, heart of a champion, uh, and, the, and the Tennessee Titans just coming out and just, you know, the new look Titans just throwing it all over the yard with, with Will Levis. A plethora of weapons. Yeah, just a bunch of weapons and, and, and some, some good old line play, good, good running back. So best division, MVP comes out of it. Trevor wins the division. Hit us in the comments if you made it that far. Let's go. And he, he gets back into the, your, your first rounds of your super flex startups. I'm going to have to be in kill him with kindness mode for these comment <laughs> responses. This is what it's supposed to be. They're fucking hot takes. <laughs> this is how this works. What do you mean? This is this is usually a very medium pace. Yeah, medium take. Out at a medium pace. Medium take <laughs> podcast. That I don't, I'm not, this is not how I operate. I operate with, I want to talk about it. I want to have a conversation and we don't need that shit. We just stay consistent and do our thing. And look, it works. It grows. Keep going. So Austin. (laughs) So all of our takes are going to hit so far. They're hundred percent accurate. And I'm going to, I'm going to give you one final one, Casey, that is absolutely going to hit Keon Coleman. He will not be a top 64 wide receiver this year. That's Mm. right. There will be Not. at least two wide receivers, basically on all 32 teams, that will outproduce Keon Coleman this season for fantasy purposes. I'm nervous, man. I, this is a this is a player who, yes, he is very gifted. He is wildly flawed. He has a lot of red flags, to put it politely. And I think something that something that caught my attention right away: the Bills' offensive coordinator, Joe Brady. He was talking about Keon Coleman in a press conference a few days ago. He said. Keon has a skill set that we like. We felt we didn't have that in our in our room, and we're looking to evolve it. Uh, he has traits that you look for and skills that you that we think we can develop. So translation, Keon Coleman's really raw. I don't necessarily know uh, how how he's going to be deployed right out of the gate. Right, you know, I I really think we're going to see somebody like Khalil Shakir produce at a higher level early on. Uh, I, I think that. Shakir is more familiar with the system and, and a lot of people forget man like Khalil Shakir was basically a more productive fantasy wide receiver and NFL wide receiver than than Stefan Diggs the final 10 games of last season go look at the numbers it was it was wild like he legitimately outproduced him but but back to Keon Coleman man let's let's end on a on a negative note let's let's uh let's be a little negative man uh, I, I I've always been worried about his separation right and look Casey we've talked about this time after time kids 20 years old like the fact that he's not okay. he's not a great separator so far it's okay right like he's going to be continue to become more polished and a better wide receiver i'm just not sure he gets there during his rookie campaign i'm not sure when he gets there but but here's here's someone that that i think he is worth the dart throw late in dynasty it, it, like late first or, i'm sorry I, I think he's worth the dart throw in in the second round of your dynasty rookie drafts but I'm still nervous about him, man. I like him for his upside, but but I, I absolutely stress about his floor. I, I think that his floor is is very low. Um, 
and it, it, I thought it was telling that the Buffalo Bills, you know, they, they kind of let them fall to the second, right? They, they kept trading back. They trade back with the Chiefs. And I was like, what are they doing, man? Like, like if they were infatuated with him, they would have took him right away. If they were infatuated with one specific wide receiver, they would have drafted him right away at, what, 28? And uh, I don't know. I, I, I just I, I worry about Keon Coleman. I, I am far from infatuated with his profile. How, how do you feel? Are you are you am I crazy? Talk to me. Casey. No, I mean, what, I, I, think, I think I think I think that might have been your most tepidest take i think that will be the take that most people will probably believe believe in the most right there um yeah outside of top 64 they yeah. didn't make it this far they're already mad about, <laughs> yeah uh, well i mean this is, i don't think anybody's gonna be out that mad it's hot takes um outside of 64 i mean may, may, maybe not i think by default he just he, pre, he might fall into a little maybe top 50 but um he's certainly a, a polarizing prospect of you know uh, maybe the touchdowns just alone could potentially, you know, keep him in, right. in there. Um, but so, then the regression year two. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but no, I, I, I don't. I want a couple of shots at Keon Coleman just because I like the guy and I and I like when people hate somebody that much that I want. Yeah! I just want to bet on him a little bit so that if I have some, I can talk about him and say, eat a bag of doo doo. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I don't. I'm not upset about it. I, I, I could I could be believing, be believing. All right, so I got I got a couple more. I'm gonna throw out here. Yeah, yeah. This one, uh, it just came to me uh, as we were talking here, just because I you know people probably won't like it. Kyron Williams finishes as RB one overall. <laughs> overall. But what about Jonathan Taylor? Well, that was a different show. That's I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, right, right. I wouldn't right. be surprised. Well, we didn't leave <laughs> off this show. <laughs> yeah. What, what about Blake Corum, brother? Blake Corum no, plays I'm, I'm, and he's fine, but Kyron Williams just comes out here and just, you know, just slays it, stays healthy, crushes all season long, is just an absolute force to be reckoned with, and the entire Dynasty community is in absolute shambles. Yeah, they wouldn't <laughs> be happy about that, man. Um, all right, but that one really wasn't even on my sheet. Um, I have two more on my sheet. Um, I'll do I'll do this one first. Because I know people, I'll go Quentin Johnston, number one receiver for the Chargers this year. Wow. Huge I... bounce back. It's there. It's there for the taking. Quentin just turns it all around, fits in with what Harbaugh wants to do. Herbert loves him, gets down the field. You can't stop him in the red zone, really develops and absolutely slays it. And the dynasty community is once again in shambles. Casey, this can't happen, man. You're the leader of the Lad McConkey hype train. No, I love Lad McConkey, but this is what we're doing. We're, we're hot taking it. I do believe that I've, it's still look. They could coexist, right? Uh, there's 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 a lot of uh, Lad know, could have a good number two season on that team. There's a lot of targets to be had there. There's all there's, Herbert is capable of supporting. No, nobody we'll left, right. you know. But but Justin Herbert's not any good, man. Uh, Don't well, you that's know that? true, and he's not going to throw to, but five times. I had a game. to flip a coin, and Big Co said, "Hey, go Trevor Lawrence MVP." Or I was going to go Justin Herbert MVP, mm. he one or the other. Oh. Um, and, and that the that the Chiefs beat the the or that the the Chargers beat the Chiefs both times, and Herbert throws for just just all over the yard. Uh, but I, you know, I do believe that Quentin Johnson is a is is a buy right now and I, I i do believe that he could finish as an as as the the chargers number one here so not that hot of a take because it's there for the taking but it, people have already decided that he's so terrible and i just think that that is bad process on those people's parts to just go ahead and write somebody off that quick who we didn't even really want to play all that much we knew he was raw when he got forced into duty mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know what wasn't great at times didn't seem to have a he, there was plenty of times where he flashed open he just did some silly things and didn't catch it and you know matt waldman hand placement uh all that all that jazz he's that diamond um but you know i i, I just for you to sit there and and the and people to just yeah go, austin to go ahead and just poo poo players because they had one they had a bad year to start and there's no way that they could be good like what you need to do is figure out where the cost now is and figure out if you're okay with what that price tag is. And and I think I'm okay with a 12th, 13th, 14th round Quentin Johnston. And it, I'll, I'll take a shot. Like, it's just, 
It's silly to just be five. Silly to just be out out on on Quentin Johnston after one season. Well, those are the people that didn't like him. To and begin it's like, ah, oh, well, you know, he just checked all these boxes that tells you that he's never going to be any good. And it's like until he is, and then what? And then you move the goalposts of like, well, we we should have seen that verse press and man, he was a <laughs> x amount of percentile, and rah, so anyway. <laughs> Quentin Johnson, but the the one I want to end with, you got another one. The big the big finale, the grand finale is the starter at the end of the season for the Dallas Cowboys is Trey Lance. Get out of here! No, oh my God, <laughs> the Cowboys don't want to pay Dak Prescott. They're sick of his antics. He's he's mid as hell, and they want to see. <laughs> He's, he's I don't, I don't, I don't believe this at all. I'm just saying they want to see what they have in Trey because they don't want to pay Dak and they can't get a contract and they, they didn't like the way the season played out. So the last four games or last two games, they're playing Trey Lance and they like what they see and they're, he, he shaves his head so that hairline goes away. And Trey Lance is a completely different guy once he loses that hair. Once he, <laughs> once he, once he, once he comes to grips with that hairline. Hit, hit that three guard, dog. Just <laughs> let it go, bro. What do you think? Casey, you never need to Casey. pay for a haircut again. What you, got? you know the entire Dallas fan base is going <laughs> to fight you in the comments after this one, man. This they, is literally they love I don't know. Half of them love hate yeah. Dak anyway. Yeah. This is literally I, every big sports show's entire model. Talk about the Lakers. Yeah. Talk about the Cowboys. You know, just the, the Yankees let, back when anyone cared about baseball. Yeah, let's yeah. change the FFD permanently, man. Let's just do hot takes every episode, okay? We'll be like Skip and uh, who's the other uh, Shannon? We'll just we'll just Shannon? fight the whole time. Yeah, we'll uh, yeah. just uh, we'll just we'll I just do it for clicks, man. Right? What's that, Austin? I said we're just gonna start recording for clicks. You know, yeah, that's how it's done. Yeah, well, I mean, we wanted to come in here and have some fun, so I'm like, all right, well, if we have some fun, I mean, give me, let me get Trey Lance replacing Dak. How much fun would that be? <laughs> Everyone would lose their mind. Like, it'd be great. I mean, and, and I mean, at the end of the day, they, there's, you know, you you want to be stuck around with Kirk Cousins all day, or you want to see what you yes. got in Trey Lance? Yeah, I know, but <laughs> <laughs> a lot of lot of casuals, a lot credit, of casuals don't want to be. Dak doesn't seem like he can win the big one. He could get you there and through the regular season, but. But, seemed to choke a little bit. Yeah, I don't. You know, who knows? Uh, who who knows? They've they've had to deal with the 49ers the last two years. Did he the win playoffs. MVP? They gave him MVP, right? Has no, he, it was Lamar. Lamar got it. Yeah, it, had to. It, well, if it wasn't Lamar, it had to have been Purdy. That's ridiculous. That it would have been <laughs> Dak Prescott. I mean, they, he was like the front runner for. I mean, he because he, he's on the Cowboys and he had a great a great great run it, yeah. by Dak Prescott. If, if to to, <laughs> to round this out, <laughs> he of, gets benched for right, Trey Lance. Right, right. But he's he's going in the third round right now with in a lot of our well, yeah drafts he's about and, to get benched people, for Trey Lance people people <laughs> are so down on him and he was fucking like QB three last year Jesus Christ so you should buy 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 Dak Prescott he he's a, a steady solid quarterback he Dak is gonna, or Purdy he is ooh ooh Purdy steady Purdy I mean you're just you're getting so much younger with Purdy. All right, Austin, you got anything else? Let's get out of here. Yeah, let's get out of here, man. Let's call it. Was, and if uh, you was, want more of this, go look, go, yeah. go download Fade Consensus. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> <laughs> no, for real, Austin. <laughs> he, that's, he, that's not what I mean. He is a very medium taked, nice podcast. Tell us where <laughs> we can get it and find it. Yeah, man. So I brought back the podcast Fade Consensus and, you know, on any platform, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, pretty much anywhere. So uh, I appreciate that, Casey. I do. Yeah, No problem, man. Go ahead on and tap that five star review for your boys. OK, it's not that hard. You, you don't even have to type anything. Just go hit the five yeah. stars and submit it. Be done. Yeah. And if you know, we got the discord, we got the Patreon, three extra episodes. We got a little a little rookie draft kit in there. We got ADP. We got some big stuff coming with with um a few different people but one being dynasty daddy make sure you go check his website out we're going to be doing some bu bunch of stuff with him he's got a great site make sure you check that out um and, and if you're not subscribed 
Let's go ahead and do that right now. I promise there's not going to be a lot of hot take episodes, but there is a hot take part on our Discord. So no, I'm just kidding. There is not. Um, but you can check out the Discord. There's all sorts of good information and, and good community growing over there. There's also a free one. Check that out. The rookie um, draft kit. I don't know if you said that. I did. I did. There's one say it again. The yeah. Bust. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get the FF out of here. We'll catch you next time. Peace.